Now we're going to do our, our last topic in our memory and caches uh, section. We're going to talk about program optimizations that consider caches. Okay? So um, the optimization, optimizing code for uh, the memory hierarchy has, you know, essentially boils down to write code that has better locality, okay, that has better locality properties. Uh, and remember, there's two types of locality, spatial locality and temporal locality. Okay? In spatial locality, what, in spatial, what we want to do is to make sure the algorithm access data contiguously as much as possible, even lays out, lays out data in memory in a way that increases uh, the spatial locality properties. And the second one is temporal locality. Makes sure uh, the algorithm, the code should make sure that if there's a data item that's going to be accessed uh, multiple times, try to access them closer in time. So you can take advantage of temporal locality and increase the likelihood that the data is going to be in the cache. Okay? And uh, ways of achieving that, there's multiple ways, but you know, two basic ones. One is a proper choice of algorithm. Of course, the algorithm itself determines a lot of the, how the data is laid out and, and how the order of the operations in the data. And the second one is loop transformations. How to reorder loops when you're traversing uh, data structures. So let me give you an example that's going to showcase how important this is. We, we talk about matrix multiplication. In matrix multiplication, uh, um, what happens is the following. For example, suppose that I have a matrix C that I'm multiplying by with, uh, that receives a multiplication between matrix A and matrix B. So this element here of uh, C, which is element I, comma J, is equals the first column of the i row of A multiplied by the first row of column J in uh, matrix B plus this one times this one plus this one times this one, this one times this one, and so on, okay? So that means that the this loop here, I don't want to read the code in detail because it's going to be, um, going to be hard for you, so, but what you need to understand is that this code is reading this, reading this, and then reading this, then reading this, and reading this, then reading this, and so on. So it's going to it's going to read the entire row of A and this entire uh, column of B, just to produce a single element in uh, in C. Okay, so and this is a matrix that's n by n elements. Okay, so we're going to do n square of these operations, okay? So it's a lot. It could be, especially if the matrix is big, this could be a lot of operations, okay? So now let's do a cache miss analysis of this, of this matrix multiplication, okay? We are going to assume that matrix elements are, are doubles, okay? So they take eight bytes, okay? And if our cache block is 64 bytes, each cache line, each cache block holds uh, eight doubles. Let's also say that our cache size C, capital C, is much smaller than than n, okay, which is the dimension of our, our uh, which one of the dimensions of our matrix? Remember the matrix n by n. So let's see what happens in the first iteration. Remember that the first iteration we're going to read the entire row of this matrix, the entire columns of this matrix. Okay. So uh, one thing to keep in mind too that the way data is laid out uh, in memory, what we're doing is we are storing an entire row in memory, then another row then another row, then another row, and so on. So let's say if this is row 0, row 1, row 2, and row 3, the way it's laid out in memory here is we're going to have entire row 0, then, in, then entire row 1, entire row 2, entire row 3, and so on. Okay? So the number of misses that we're going to have is going to be what? It's going to be n divided by 8, because as we're reading this one line here, we know that since each line here, each cache line, each cache block has eight doubles, okay? So like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to access the first one, it's going to be a miss. Then the second one is going to hit, a 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 hit. And then the next one here is going to be a miss. So that's why it's n divided by eight, okay? That's taking advantage of that because of spatial locality. We're taking only n over 8, okay? Now, we're going to add um, n here because for each column here, okay? So, um, each, each, uh, for each column, we're going to, sorry, for this column here, for each row of this column, we're going to have a cache miss, right? We're going to miss on this one, and then this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, for eight, like all of them, because just this 
is uh, bigger than a block. Remember that if the cache is much smaller than n, definitely a block is much smaller than n. Okay. So and then when we are uh, done with this iteration, only this part and this part here is going to be in the cache. And why is it? It's just because we just read the first element and everything else we didn't read. Okay. Great. So we're going to have 9n over 8 misses for the first iterations. Now, if we extend this to all of the other iterations, what we're going to do is going to have 9n over 8 um, misses multiplied by n squared, which is the number of iterations. Remember that we're going to do this. This is n by n. And we're going to do this for each one of the elements here. So that means there's n square elements. So this that means that our final cache miss, uh, the number of cache misses, is 9 over 8 multiplied by n squared. So it's a lot of cache misses. Okay. So one way to solve this problem is to do what we call a blocked matrix multiplication. So instead of doing an entire row, an entire column, we're going to do this block by block. Okay. Such that we're going to, when we read uh, a um, part of A here, we're going to read all of these. And then for B here, instead of reading just, just the first one, we're going, to lead, we're going to read multiple rows, okay, but smaller, and a subset of the row, such that this stays in cache and this stays in cache. Okay? And then when we need to cycle over this multiple times, we're not going to have to pay the miss again. Isn't that cool? So um, now let's, let's do a uh, cache miss analysis of this one. Okay? So now how many blocks are we going to have? Well, we're going to have n over b blocks because b is the size of the block. Okay? So, and we know that three blocks fits in the cache. Okay? So, uh, and, and uh, that means that 3b squared is smaller than the cache size c. So now what we're going to have is we're going to have b squared over 8 misses for each block, right? Because I asked this repeatedly. And then, um, so if we do, when, when, when we add this up, we're going to have 2n over b times b squared over 8, which, then, which ends up being nb over 4 misses. So now in, in the end, after we're in the cache, what we're going to have is we're going to have all of this because we access all of these blocks that happen to us too fit in the cache. Isn't that cool? Great. So uh, now this is this in the first iteration. When we do this over all iterations, you know, all of the ones are going to be the same as the first one. We're going to do this. But now since we are dividing, uh, we're doing this in blocks. Now we're doing n over b squared. That would be the number because we're going to do this once for each block. But now we're going to do fewer times. We're going to do n over b times squared. Okay, so in the end, what we're going to do is our cache is going to be um, n squared divided by 4b. So there's a huge impact in our cache mess. So in summary, if we don't do uh, blocking, we're going to have 9 over 8 n squared misses. But if we do blocking, it's going to be 1 over 4b uh, multiplied by n squared misses. Okay, so if b equals 8, the difference is 36 times. If B is 16, the difference in number of misses is 72x. It's just really, really, really big. Okay? So, uh, and the reason for a dramatic difference is that uh, matrix multiplication inherently has temporal locality, but you have to reorder the, the operation in order to take advantage of that. Okay? So, the input data is 3n squared, and the computation is 2n cubed. So every array element is accessed order n times. Okay? But the program really has to be written properly. Otherwise, the temporal locality is too far apart in time, and the cache can't cap it, can capture it. Okay? So the important thing to, uh, to, to keep in mind for cache-friendly code is that the programmer, you, can uh, optimize uh, code for cache performance, but it really depends on how the data structures are organized, how data are accessed, how the loop NAS structure works, and think about blocking, because blocking is a general technique. You can always try to reorganize how the order to do things such that you try to keep only a block, only parts of it in memory. Okay? 
So, and one thing to, to keep in mind is that all systems like cache-friendly code, but to get absolutely optimal performance really depends on the platform because it depends on knowing the actual cache organization, cache geometry, things like cache sizes, line sizes, sensitivities, and so on, okay? So, you can get most of the advantage with generic code, Okay, so uh, in order, when you're writing generic code, just keep in mind that keep working set size reasonably, reasonably small. So it fits in the cache and you take advantage of temporal locality. Uses small strides, so you take advantage of uh, spatial locality, right, because it tends to be close by. And focus on inner loop code, because those are the ones that uh, uh, are going to be accessed close by in time. Okay? Let's end our... Uh, memory and cache section what we, with what we call the memory mountain, okay? This is, this is very cool. Again, we, we, are, we run some experiments uh, in Intel Core i7, okay? And what we're showing here in this axis is read throughput megabytes per second. So that means up is good, is better, okay? And our uh, L1 cache is 32 kilobytes. So, and this is the working set size, which grows this way, and the stride size grows this way, okay? First thing to note is, as you increase the stride size, you see there's a general drop in read throughput because you're not taking as much advantage of temporal locality. Now, the other thing is if you go, if you increase the, the, the working set size, if it fits in the L1 cache, you have really, really good high throughput. But then as, the, as it doesn't fit in the L1 cache now, we're gonna drop to the other plateau here, which is whatever fits in the L2. And then the next plateau is whatever fits in the L3. Whatever doesn't fit in the L3, you have to go to memory. Isn't that cool? So uh, that means if you keep the working set size, it's much higher, it's low, uh, it's small, there's much higher chance to stay within the L1, which is good, or with the L2, and so on. So the thing to keep in mind is take advantage of spatial locality, so you keep the stride low. Take advantage of the working set size. You can do blocking to keep, uh, to focus on the working set size for, for parts of your code, okay? And if you keep it small, you're gonna get very high throughput, which has a huge impact in performance. This concludes our memory and cache section, and I'll see you soon.